got too close to a choya and I can't get it out. Wow, is it like one strand at a time? With one that little... strand at a time, yeah. Wow. And it all began with old refrigerators. glorious sunrise. And there's a storm coming so it should be a nice day to maybe go to the Dwarf Car Museum. Open 9 to 5, the Dwarf Car Museum is the brainchild of Ernie Adams. No lady likes to snuggle or dine accompanied by a porcupine. John just made an astute observation. It doesn't have to be a real big building if you're dealing with dwarf cars. Because <laughs> it's a small building. Oh look, they have rust rooms over there instead of restrooms. Yep. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> sign our book. Thank you. So. I guess I got a beat fee. Yeah. yeah. So what we, is? We, we do five dollars each. Okay. Whoa. The privately owned nonprofit oh, museum hilarious. showcases his handcrafted miniature cars. <laughs> got to stand by them to see how small they really are. <laughs> Do they actually run? Come in. Ernie began his first car in 1965, a replica of a 1928 Chevy sedan made out of nine old refrigerators. It took him eight years to complete. He currently has nine cars with the 1941 Chevy under construction. The grounds represent a lifetime of collecting, including old cars, an outhouse that served his family back in Nebraska, old refrigerators, and plenty of personal pronouncements. He looked out the window at his farmhouse when he was 15 and he seen a refrigerator laying in the weeds. And it had a tire swing laying up and he thought it looked like a touring car body with a black fender. So he wanted to build a car out of the refrigerator. So in 1965, he built this car. That's, that's him and I in 1971 oh, wow. there. 
Uh, but then in about late 70s, he put another refrigerator on the top and then sealed it here at this belt line and, and put the windows and finished it up. And, uh, and that's the... He would, he would draw, he drew this in kindergarten. He draw a little, he always was a, a car guy. And then when he was a kid, he would put the old wash machine motors on his bicycles. And it all began with old refrigerators. We had a Nash when we were kids. I don't know what year, it would have been a 40 something, I think. But man, we could pile them into the back, six kids and one Nash. <laughs> Outhouse located on the farm where Ernie Adams grew up in Harvard, Nebraska. <laughs> Wait a minute, he brought it all the way down here. It was relocated here in Maricopa in 2010 and then restored. Oh, that is too funny. A man that moved his outhouse. This is not an operational toilet. Do not use. It's a shame you have to say that too. John says it reminds him of Sanford and Sons. <laughs> Bringing a lot of junk and people pay to see it. But actually it was pretty cool. Definitely worth the five bucks a pop. And especially if you get to meet Ernie. a wildlife refuge right next to Oregon Pike Cactus National Monument and I'm going to go inside the visitor center here in Ajo to get some more information about it because apparently it's kind of a rough road and I don't I want to find out if it's passable. So apparently to drive through the refuge you really need four-wheel drive a lot of sand she said but there is a there is a jeep company that can take you through but she also said that they've just redone the that loop drive in the monument and uh and that should be excellent excellent yeah so we can do some hikes up on that loop we've done it on our e-bikes but haven't done the hikes I actually don't think I said where we were going. We're going to Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. And it smells glorious because it's, uh, it's kind of sprinkly rainy and tomorrow's supposed to be the rainiest day. So maybe I'll just sit in a van and do editing. With the windows open. Yeah, with the windows open so we can smell it. Ajo, Arizona is 33 miles from the park's visitor center and the last place for services before reaching Twin Peaks Campground in the park. It's a big open pit mine right over here. Native Americans were mining Ajo's copper long before the Spaniards arrived. The town boomed in 1911 with the advent of new recovery methods. The open pit mine stopped production in 1985. The Sonoran Desert incorporates the northern end of the Gulf of California, including most of Baja, southeastern California, and southwestern Arizona. Nice sight. We've had our share of lock problems on this trip. The first one, John didn't have the key, so we had to cut it off. Now we're in, out in the middle of nowhere, and now, we can't get the lock, the combination lock to even open. So he's trying to nip away at the cable so we can get the locks off of, I mean, the bikes off of the rack. So I think that leaves us with one lock left, John. Oh, we have two locks. Okay, so we started with four. We'll be down to two. And this one is a, what, what is the brand? Thanks, Kryptonite. Yeah, thanks, Kryptonite. So when we went into the visitor center here, we ran into some people that watched the channel, Liz and Jeff, a great couple. 
I guess we could have asked them if they had bolt cutters. Wow, is it like one strand at a time? With one that little... strand at a time, yeah. Wow. Well, at least you got it off. It's been raining most of the night and this morning and it won't let up until about noon. So we're stuck inside, which is good. I can edit and then hopefully it'll let up around noon and we can go on a hike. But right now I'm making oatmeal and some, oh, I'm frying up some apple, I guess like an apple compote. And that's smelling really good. Oh my gosh, I got too close to a Choya and I can't get it out. Oh, and it hurts. Oh my gosh. I gotta get back and get some help from John. I was I was doing some video and I got too close. Okay, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, this happened to Lynn, didn't it? Oh my God. I, uh. There are two of them, so, okay. So be really careful. Don't put it in any further than it already is. Ow. Oh. oh. Man. Oh, gosh. What is that? <laughs> Where did that come from? Where did this come from? Not come from me. Would you get me a paper towel? Are gonna go for it. This is the, the Puerto Blanco scenic loop. I don't know how many miles. Hikers. It says it's four to six hours. High clearance vehicle required past this point. Oh, here it is. The shortest distance is 32 miles. So it's 32 miles total. I think that's what it said. At least there won't be any dust. Yeah, it's sprinkling, but it's not too bad. It's only 1.2 miles to Dripping Springs.
straight that way so other people can, or whatever. That right, way. that way. Oh, no. Oh, okay, yeah. whatever. That's, 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 that's. Lunch break. We're going to use up those hard-boiled eggs. Yummy, yummy. Well, I think it's the Golden Golden Bell Mine. Little picnic area, trash. That's amazing. They provide that way back here. I don't see any information about the mine. I'll have to look it up. Big hole in the ground. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa, that's pretty deep. Wow. Uh, probably can't see it, but that is dang deep. See, is there another hole up here? So here's here's the noble explorer. Am I her Robinson Crusoe? Yeah, here's another hole. <laughs> see if that one's... Um, I bet you it's been filled in. That's why it doesn't have a fence around it. Who knows? Oh, no, no. Oh, there you go. Do I dare walk on? Wow. How did they get down there? Jeez, John, I'm afraid to walk out on there. It's scary. Wow. That thing, we need a flashlight to see how deep it goes. I don't know. I can't focus, focus. Focus, focus. Wow, that is one deep hole. Uh -huh. do, 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 do. Wow, is that focus? <laughs> That's kind of scary walking over that hole. Ooh. Okay, let's go, it's raining too hard. Mm. Neat. Two holes, I wonder if they connected. We are now, this is the Golden Bell Mine. Then we come down here and our next stop is the Quito Baquito Quito Baquito Spring. Going yes, left. that way. Yeah. So, uh, it's probably, I'm gonna guess it's about seven or eight miles. John goes in the pit toilet. I'm gonna go check out this well over here. It's called Bonita Well. Wow, trough. Obviously had some cattle here. Old pen. Neat. I think it looks like a giraffe. I don't know why John thinks it looks like a kangaroo. But that's kind of cool. This section of the desert is sometimes called the Green Desert, and for good reason. Its bi-seasonal rainfall pattern results in more plant species than any other desert in the world. And the only place in the world where the saguaro cactus grows in the wild. The park is an outstanding natural preserve, isolated and largely unspoiled. Didn't expect this.
it's a good road. I do think you would want high clearance, especially there's a little bit of a sandy bit. But I think all train tires are even more important than uh, ground clearance. But it was a it was a really nice road trip. It does not take six hours though. We did it. I know we we went on a hike and we still did it in four hours. What a chocolate mess. Let's see what the other side looks like. Yeah, that's not too bad. This is a nice mess. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. How could they say it was going to set at 4.42 when it's 4.42 now and it hasn't set? <laughs> Which one looked cute in your garden? Stalkers. <laughs>